Y'all, y'all are being a little funny. Last night we were watching an Indiana Jones movie. And I thought, well, I was saying, if, if they upgraded our, if they upgraded our video signal from the cable company, she said, why? I said, if somebody adjusted our TV, I said, this is the pretty sharpest picture I've seen you not know when. Somebody's done something. Somebody's upgraded something. She said, yeah. She said, you. <laughs> she said, money, but they put those glasses on you. <laughs> I said, oh, so it was not the TV to fix it. It was me in here. So sometimes, it's a good spiritual lesson there. Sometimes, we're seeing things that's not looking so good, but if we adjust our attitude, wow, it's amazing how things, oh, come on. It's amazing how things can change. It ain't changed one bit, but uh, you know what? But that did, and I thank God for it. All right, ready? Uh, oh. Let's go in here and receive, receive today's offering. There's a little man in the back, a little brass man in the back. You can drop your cross in the back. If you've already done it, that's cool. Uh, if you haven't, put it in your hand. Uh, and if you've already done it, just hold your hand up. But I want us to say this together. I lift my offering to you, let it please you, O Lord. This is my seed. Although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply. Accept my seed, O Lord. Give Lord another. We clap. Praise the Lord. Thanks for all good to the Lord in prayer. Does anybody have an outspoken request? Uplift your hands, special needs, slow, slow. So let's go to Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunities we have to be in your house, Lord God. And it's a privilege, Lord God, to be able to come and worship as one body and one mind. And Father, we just ask that your presence would bless each and every one here, Father. And Father, touch each and every request, spoken and unspoken alike. Show yourself strong. Let your people see it. They may further believe and testify of everything that you've done, Father. And we'll thank you for everything that's said and done. Now repair our hearts receive the message that you have and anoint the pastor to deliver. Father, we'll thank you for everything that's said and done in this house this morning. In Christ Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Church. Everybody stand back up. All right, Brandon. <laughs>
good, isn't it? All the time. All the time. You know, I remember sitting, I remember sitting in the hospital many times with my kids. My mother were dead, deadly, deathly sick, and my, well, my first wife, and my second wife, and Bethany. Uh, 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 so all three kids, but Bethany, Bethany especially right there at the end. And I remember walking up down the halls, and I would say two things. And I'd sing those two songs, and I surrender all. It's yours, God. She's yours, God. She's yours. She's yours. Whatever you choose to do, I will accept it. Just give me the strength to do whatever it is, and I will do it. And also this next song, Because He Lives. And I know you, you might get tired of hearing it, but you know what? I sing it. If you can get my head, which you'd probably get surprised if you got my head and realize how much room there was in there. <laughs> but you hear, you hear me singing, you hear, I surrender all. And, and you would also hear because he lives all the time in my head. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead. We're going we're gonna... <clears> to. <throat> Praise God. How many of you got allergies? Give me fun. <clears throat> Especially when you're trying to clear your throat while you're singing. Okay, ready? Here we go.
This is the last Sunday of this series. Some of y'all say amen. Amen. <laughs> Building a better view. God is, God is working on us every day in every way. You know, if we can understand that when things are happening, instead of asking God, why is this happening to me? Thank him that it's happening for you. Amen. God is doing something special in your heart. You just got to, in his life, you just got to trust him. You got to trust him. Because God is awesome. And he knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. I decided again because of uh, the old book. <laughs> the old book, I decided I was going to try an old one anyway. Okay? Y'all ready? Gonna need it. Look, a minister. Let me sit down with this. A minister decided that a visual demonstration would add emphasis to his Sunday sermon. He took four worms and placed them in four separate jars. The first worm was put in a container of alcohol. The second worm was put in a container of cigarette smoke. The third worm was put in a container of chocolate syrup. The fourth worm was put in a container of good clean soil. At the conclusion of the sermon, the minister reported the following results. The first worm in alcohol, dead. The second worm in cigarette smoke, dead. The third worm in chocolate syrup, dead. The fourth worm in good clean soil, alive. So the minister asked the congregation, what can we learn from this demonstration? Maxine, not a little Johnny this time, Maxine okay. was sitting in the back, quickly raised her hand and said, as long as you drink, smoke, and eat chocolate, you won't have worms. Never knew if he did that service. The old dad put up a sign and said, do not disturb. And my wife said, no, you need to put up that's already disturbed. Proceed with gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Uh, yeah, he got good. Oh, man. Get your Bible out. Look at chapter 2. We're working on spiritual warfare and rebuilding ourselves. We, we've got something very special happening right now in our midst. When the world's going crazy like it is, when the world's going fine and dandy and there's no problems, guess what? The church, I mean, people don't listen too much to the church. But when things are going crazy, that's when they start listening to the church. And so things, have you seen anything any crazier than this day and time? As a matter of fact, every day when I do turn on the loose, it's an analysis of challenge to see if I see anything sane. Amen. I mean, things are not sane at all. I can't, I, I can't believe some of the stuff that I've seen. And the worst of all is <clears throat> that they're trying to, you know, feed it to us. And I'm going to do stations that lost their minds. But this, this stuff is getting worse all the time. All right, Philippians. Let us have chapter 2. Stand for the reading of God's Word. <laughs> God is awesome all the time. God is awesome to me. Uh, get rid of some of these cords. I got a message from the front desk that said, watch the cords. Technology is awesome. Yeah. I got three notes in a row. Watch the cords. Watch the cords. Watch the cords. Okay, I've watched them now long. They ain't done their <laughs> They ain't done their trick, have <laughs> Here we go. God's good. Long time. Long time. Philippians chapter two. <clears throat> I'm not sure what this week's gonna bring as far as sermons, but you can believe it's gonna be something new with us building a better us. Okay? And this here is going to be a, a culmination of all three that we've gone through. So you're going to hear a little bit from the first two, just a little bit, and you're going to hear a bunch uh, from the new one. Chapter 2, verse 1, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill my joy that you may be like-minded, having the same love one, of them being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in the loveliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, 
that being in the form of God, thought it not a robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and being made in the likeness of men, and being abound in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and hath given him a name, which is above every name. In the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God and the Father. Let's just point your hand this way, we're going to ask God for a special touch. And Lord and Father, we love you, Lord, we praise your name, we thank you for your grace, we thank you for your mercy. We know, God, that you are alive and well and here on the throne. God, I ask you right now, Lord, to minister to us and through us in a very, very powerful way. Help us to see and to know and understand that you're in total control. There's nothing that happens that is not without your reach and without without your sight. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us in a very powerful way. Help us to know that this day is your day and that something special is happening right now in our very presence. And we thank you, God, for what you're doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said, Amen. 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 You can be seated on the way down to somebody. The passage behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. God is so, 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 so good. You know, uh, yesterday was, was, a, was, a, was kind of a tough day because not only was Sierra in the hospital, but one of my best friends, uh, no, no, actually, I didn't know I knew him in high school. We competed against each other in the regional FFA contest. And I found out later that we had been going head to head, you know, then, but by the time I know him, we've been head to head for 20 something years, 30 years. Uh, but it's always a good thing. Always, always a good thing. And, and out of all the people I've known, as far as living creatures, as far as having somebody to, to do not, not, it was not a Bible trip, it was Bible wrestling. <laughs> Trying to see if we come with the answer to the passes. You know, and, and me and him would go at it. I used to, I used to tear him up on New Testament, he'd tear him up on Old Testament. And so he was the one that got me really, really, really going strong in Old Testament so that I wasn't going to be whooped by him every time. And I got him in the New Testament going so he wouldn't get whipped by me every time. So he reached each other on. It was really great, both musicians. Both of us, our wives had children, they did. I mean, we, a lot of parallels, and uh, uh, had to say goodbye to him yesterday. And today I get to baptize his son. Yeah. And so that, that's awesome. So, so uh, that's the like 3 o'clock, that's what I'm going to do. So just, just remember, you know, if names are not important, just know that, uh, thank God that, that even though there's some hard things going on, there's some good things coming out of it in the midst of the pain. And God's awesome. All right, now, Billy and Billy, you had, had just a few slides so we, for the last few weeks just so we can keep some continuity here. All right, have you ever gone into a spiritual rut? Uh, look at that guy there. He's in a spiritual rut. You're miserable, you're obstructed, and you're hopeless. There's no way out. All you can do is try to struggle to maintain. And don't raise your hands, but is there anybody in here today that will say, I'm struggling just to maintain? Don't raise your hands. Don't point them. Amen? You know, it's hard when you get in a situation. Okay? Because when you get in a situation and watch that, you find your spiritual life lame. And then because you don't want to take all the blame, you blame somebody else. And so it becomes an unending cycle, the same way in marriages. They start playing the blame game. And all of a sudden now everybody's blaming each other and there's no resolution to anything. It just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Because as long as you are lame and keep blaming, there's going to get nothing but the same. And so, uh, spiritual rust. Here's a guy, he's in a spiritual rut. He's trying to hand the shovel to somebody else. You know, but that's not how it works. If you're going to build a new you, you've got to understand this. And that is that you've got to realize that you have a part to play. You have to have your attention in this thing. You've got to look at what you see. And look at what you're feeding your mind with. And you got to watch your attitude. And you got to be careful about how you think about people and how you think about situations. And you got to watch your actions and how you respond uh, to things. Because how you respond has a lot to do with it. Remember spiritual warfare? 10% while Satan's throwing at you and 90% how you respond. 
Here's how you respond. Your attention. You don't, I'm not watching Satan and watching what he's doing. I'm watching God. And I'm watching what God's doing. I try to keep my attitude on. I don't think about how bad I got. I think about, you know what? God's got me and he knows what's going on in my actions. How do I respond? Not God, why are you doing this to me? But thank you, God, that you are doing this for me. And there's something special that's going to happen with all of this. When you come out of it, you're definitely going to be stronger. Amen? You're going to be bigger. So, the beard is again from last week, well, from weeks, no, two weeks actually. By Billy O'Bender, you <coughs> let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That word mind is attitude. Let this attitude be, and let it be constant in you personal. Don't look for somebody else to, to, to uh, be an example of Christ in your life. You be an example of Christ in their life. Amen? Quit worrying about what the preacher or this person or my mom or my daddy or what? No! You! You! As God, you have the attitude of Christ. And Philippians chapter 2 shows you what the attitude of Christ was. Uh, uh, he was a servant, and he didn't have a problem with being a servant. The one who created the worlds was a servant. Wow. So now, here we go. We're getting ready to get into some meat. Are y'all ready? Not me. Is there a problem? It's his fault. It's her fault. How many has that, has that ever been your song? Just look at it. Verse 1. It's not me. Of course, it's their fault. No, excuse me. The course is it's not me. The verse 1 is it's their fault. Verse 2 is his fault. The verse 4, 3, it's her fault. The course is it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. How many of you ever sang that song? Do not raise your hands? Because I promise you, everybody, at least once, has sang that song. Amen? Okay. So now, <clears throat> it's time to quit looking out to find someone else or something to blame, but look inside and take responsibility. So here it is. Here we go. Y'all ready? We're going for the last two weeks, and then we're going to do stuff. How many ever read this book, one of the lost books of the Bible? Quoted it many times. Oh, the long, I quoted it a lot. That's my favorite Bible verse, my Bible book to quote from. Yebin. Yebin. From the book of Yebin, from the prophet Yebin. Well, I'm going to do this. Yebin. Why do you have well, Yebin? Yebin, Yebin. And remember this again. I told you this is stuff that. It's been going on two weeks. Some of y'all have been here going, I've already seen this. But I promise you, when you saw it the first time, we went through a lot deeper part of it, okay? Anything before but doesn't really matter. Somebody goes to you and starts telling you something, and they go, but, I'm sorry, but, that apology is no good. Well, I understand that I actually was the one to turn on the switch, but I understand that I was the one that messed up, but, hey, they're not taking responsibility. They're blame. So here's the new challenge. Take this out of your, your vocabulary. I meant to. But. All right? So here. Here we go. He ain't got good. All the time. All the time. What are the ants? Talk about the ants. Now, now, again, just for those that haven't been here, this was the first week. We talked about how you were thinking. All right? Here you can hear what I can see. My glasses are not, they're, they're magnifiers, are not telescopic. Ready? And if you said any of these, you got some ants. All right. Ants, and we talked about Decon and Ray last time, or first time, how to get rid of these negative thoughts. Ants, automatic negative thought syndrome. All right. It's one thing to have, an auto, have negative thoughts. That's one thing. To have automatic negative thoughts is a, is a step up and it gets worse. To have the automatic negative thought syndrome, now you are consumed with negative. Have you ever been around somebody who's consumed with negative? Totally consumed with negative. Now, without raising hands again, have you ever been consumed with negative? All right, here it goes. He's always putting me down. I'm so stupid. I won't get this done on time. I won't even try. You never listen to me. Nobody can love me. I feel like staying in bed, but I should go to the gym. I'm a failure. No one understands me. I'm so annoying. Uh, why try? I'm awful at this. I shouldn't cry. She didn't say hello. She must hate me. I shouldn't get upset over this. 
but they never listen to me. <clears throat> now, that's just some of the negative thoughts and some of the automatic negative thoughts that people have to battle with every day to their life, whether it be in their family, whether it be in their siblings, whether it be at work. You got to remember, church, you got to remember, automatic negative thoughts will hit you before you have a chance to reason. You can't even think about it. You should, instead of reasoning it out and figuring out the problem, instead, automatic negative thoughts take over and you just get on the on the bus that's going straight down, not the one that's going up, on top of my hell. Down. Everything's down, 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 instead of taking it nice and simple and figuring out the problem. So, think better thoughts. And here it is. Summing it all up, friends. I'd say you do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you've learned from me, what you have heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Philippians 4, 8, and 9. Think better thoughts. You want to get better? Start thinking better thoughts. Also, hear better sounds. I won't go in this really strong, but Romans 10, 17 to 21, so faith them by hearing. And then it's hearing the good news of Christ or hearing by the word of God. That word hearing by means literally the word of God means the preached word of God. It's the, it is, is, is the word, the rightful word right now. It's the word that comes to you in season. By hearing that word, your faith, you'll be able to step out of that negative ant or that boatful ant. Amen? So that was, that was the first week. Here's the second week. If you focus on your giants, you stumble. If you focus on your God, your giants will stumble. So, what does that mean? See better sights. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, Hebrews filled them too. Many people uh, look for the bad in people and look for bad circumstances. See only their faults and the negatives. How many, how many people have ever said, well, if you, if, if you did me wrong once, if you do me wrong twice, I'll write you all. I know people like that. I mean, I got friends that are like that. If you do me wrong once, okay, but you do me wrong twice, you're out of your out. It's over. Don't even get three strikes. And I'm all the time talking to them and saying, why are you like this? Don't you understand that you may be having the same, you may be doing the same thing to somebody else that they did to you. And they may not have realized what they were doing to you when they did it. And you, you, you got to try to reason this out. Don't let the ants take over. I, I tell you all the time, you got an ants infestation. Man, the ants are eating you up. Man, the ants, get rid of them ants. And they go, I know, I know, I know. And they go right back and they look the door, have a picnic, and the ants come right on back in. So, train yourself to look for good and look at Jesus in all situations. Now, here we go. <clears throat> Much like this. You ever seen these at the places of business where they're advertising something? You can pull off the pull off the address or pull off the, the phone number. Well there it is right there. You can make a difference. And you pull off, I will, I will, I will. Well part of becoming a better you is literally perform better deeds. Now, what am I talking about performing better deeds? Watch whatever you do, do it hardly, as unto the Lord and not unto men. Did he say, whatever you do in church? Mm. Did he say, whatever you do with your family? Did he say, whatever you do with your kids? What did he say? Whatever you do. Whatsoever you do. Here's the heavy part. He's not putting a label on it. Your family, your friends, the people that do good to you. He's talking about life. 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 Whatever you do. Life. Do it heartily. 
whatever in life is happening, the life within you needs to come out. It might not make sense in the moment, but if you're writing this down, later on this is going to hit you. Whatever you do, whatever comes to you in your life, God's got a life within you. You're born of Christ. He's living within you. Do it heartily. The life within you. As unto the Lord, the life giver. And not unto men, the life takers. Think about it. One thing I was learning when I was getting this refrigeration license was, and I know this has got nothing to do with this, but it's got all to do with it, was the uh, number one killer somebody worked for an air conditioner on electricity. It's refrigerant. The refrigerant gets in your lungs, if you breathe it in, it's heavier than the air, and it'll push your air out, and you will asphyxiate. Right there, on the ground, not air conditioning. If you just have to go, you're gone. Because it takes the life out of you. There's people in your life that are like the creature. Every time they open their mouths, it's heavier. <laughs> it's heavier than the air. And it's just drinking the life out of it. They're life takers. There's some people you get around, I can't wait to get around them. Because I know I'm going to hear something good, it's going to be awesome. There's other people I get around and going, oh no. The funny thing is, I'll be in Walmart and I'll see one of the life techniques. I'll say, you know what, Lord, I'm not really at the moment. I tell you what, if you put them back in my life on the next hour, I'll talk to them. I'm just going to back up and go this way. Now, if I back up and go this way, I'm running my worst. <laughs> okay. And by the time I get to the field, the other person's called up there. And so I feel the asphyxiation coming. <sighs> so, whatever you do, give it everything you got. As to the Lord, the life giver. Not in the men, because there's going to be people that's going to drain the life out of you. But guess what? If God keeps putting them in your path, it's not so they can drain the life out of you. It's so that you can instill life into them. <laughs> Amen? You still like it. You still like them to it. You still like to do it. Alright. So get ready. Get ready. Get ready. We're gonna have some fun in just a minute. Before better days do it, Lord, we just read that. Matthew 25 and 40 says, The king will answer, I guarantee you this truth. Whatsoever you did from one of my brothers or sisters, no matter how unimportant they seem, you did it for me. The deeds of many are negative. Self-motivated, dishonest, displeasing to God. So many people out there need to be lifted up. They're waiting. God's putting you in their path so you can lift them up. You may not, you know, I, I, I think I told somebody last week, I think I told you all this, but I went to the nurse to see and and there was this very pleasant lady, she was working with this, and I told her how pleasant she was. And she said, thank you. I said, my father, I see the glory of God on you. She said, oh, man, thank you so much. I want him to be seen in my life. And I said, just know that you're brightening up the room. She said, thank you. And then my father, I thought about it. And I said, well, you know, everybody has the opportunity to brighten a room. She said, really? I said, yeah, some do it by entering it. <laughs> and some do it by leaving it. <laughs> but everybody... In light of the broom. Here we go. Y'all ready? Now I'm gonna meddle. Everybody ready for me to meddle a little bit? Can I meddle something? Y'all tell me about the meddle. Meddle. Y'all tell me something. So y'all meddle. You're mad. Meddle a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna meddle a little bit. Y'all say, Pastor, lay down the flower. Lay down the flower. Alright. To be a better person, attend better places. Now, there's all kinds of places that can be better, but this is where it starts. Okay? Get ready. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Psalm <laughs> 122 and 1. They were glad 
This release to brighten up, to lift your spirits. So the work, I mean, the, the house of God is not a, more than just a better place. It's the best place. It's a blessed place. You get a blessed going in, you get a blessed going out. It's a very, very powerful place to be. How many people have had your feelings hurt in Walmart? How many times you feel this hurt in McDonald's? How many times you feel this hurt at uh, food line? But you still got it, don't you? How many times people have something that's been misunderstood? You get in there and say, this is not right, you got it. And there's some misunderstandings. But you still got it. Why? Because you don't need to be there. I went to church and somebody said I did. They didn't tell me how pretty I was. They didn't tell me my hair looked good. They, did, they saw my shoes and said, "Is that the best you can do?" I look at Eddie when he puts his shoes on backwards. And I said, "Son, I consider you smart, to hold it down." <laughs> then he said, "My little backwards to stay on better." <laughs> I said, it's okay, it's fine. I'll just keep wearing mine the way they are. <laughs> but this little thing, and Satan throws the hands out to you. Throws the hands out, throws the hands out, throws the hands out, throws the hands out. You stop going to church. You don't keep you out of Walmart, you don't keep you out of the food line, you don't keep you out of post office, you don't keep you out of those places, but he'll keep you out of church. You know why? Because in food line and Walmart, I may get the bread, the bread of life, the bread, and maybe get clothing and get taken care of it that way. But in church, I get the bread of life. In church, I get to learn about the mercies of God. In church, I get to hear, faith come by hearing and hearing by the preached word of God. Because that's why Satan wants you to stay out of here. If everybody in this community understood the power of being together in corporate worship. This place will be so packed. We have to have two services or three services in the back. It'd be amazing. Matter of fact, we could have a service every day if everybody realized just how powerful this place was. But because of the conditions and because of the way things are going on out in this world and because of the ants, they choose. And it's a choice. They choose not to be here. This is your safe place. I remember one night I was preaching in the Eatonton, and it was kind of crazy because there was thunderstorms. And while we were in the church, and I was getting before everybody preached, the pastor got up and he said, I know people were looking at the wind and saw the lightning and heard the thunder, and it was really going really, really bad. And, and the pastor said, don't worry, we're in the ark. We're in the same place. And that stuck. Matter of fact, when we got approved, he put some money in my hand and says, I got an assignment for you. I said, what? He said, there's a steakhouse right down the road. I want you to take you and your family to the steakhouse to get a meal. I said, well, I'm all right. He said, no, I insist. He said, but I, he said, I insist. Stop in this restaurant and get you and your family a steak. So, yes, sir. He's my helper. He said, yes, sir. I, I got in the car and said, I really don't want to stop there, but I'm going to do what he said. But he asked, and so I stopped. And we stayed there for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and had a steak, potatoes, salad. And got in the car, it was still raining, it finally calmed down. As it finally calmed down, we got in the car and we left. And when we got down the road, we saw a path where a tornado had come down. It went all the way across the road. It tore everything. And where was I at when I was in the state of place? I was in the state of place. And I was in the state house. 
So while everything being torn to pieces, I was worshiping God. And when I got to worshiping God, uh, got spiritual food, then I got me a steak and potato food. All this was going on. And that taught me the most valuable lesson. Remember, this is the safe place. One night I was preaching in, in, in when I was in Benson. And we heard, it was the same thing. It was really, really bad. And I remember that from years before. And I said, y'all go to the safe place. It's going to be okay. And the lightning, we heard it cut through the trees. It went right behind the church and hit our transformer. And it, it didn't explode. And the lights went out. It was safe enough or wide enough that we could still see. And then when people started to come we got to get out. I said, we're in the same place. Trust him. So I, all this stuff was going on again. We were in the safe place. Now, what's he got to do with us now? Look around us, what's going on in this world. Never have I, I don't even believe the stuff that I'm seeing now. I can't understand. I can't believe it. It just boggles my mind. The crazy mess that's happening around us. And so, what does Satan want to do? Keep us out of our safe place. This is your safe place. This is where you get your spiritual meat. This is where you get your oh, I can stay home no more. Well, sometimes you can. Sometimes if you're sick, you need to be home. If you're not feeling good, you need to be home. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about habitually. Habitually. Well, I can whatever, because let me tell you something. Corporate worship is not much more powerful than the Word of God and corporate worship together. This is very, very, very powerful. So now, surrender. Number one, surrender because God's got a plan. He says in Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the assembling of yourself. The word forsake means leave behind. How many people do you know that left God behind Think about it. God used to be on their mind all the time. They're talking about God. They got things going. And I've noticed, I've noticed when Satan gets them out of church, it's not long before he gets them out of their mind. The Satan not. The assembly. That word assembly is where we get the word in the Greek for synagogue. It's talking about church. Safety is God has a good plan. Where there's no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety, Proverbs 11 and 14. There's strength. Find, uh, he has a powerful plan. One will chase a thousand, but two will put 10,000 to flight. You realize how powerful we are today? This is a powerful group of people. We can just realize, you know, uh, 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 I think it was Monday. I think it was Monday. Maybe it was Monday before that. So it was Monday. I was in there at B5. And I was telling the guys how powerful it was for us to be together. There's a lot of 12 of us. I said how powerful it is for us to be together and seeking God and his word and his power. And I said, and I said, we're going to pray. We're going to say the most powerful prayer you've ever prayed. And they said, watch that. And we all put our hands together. And we started saying the Lord's Prayer. As we started saying the Lord's Prayer, it got so loud. 12 guys, it was so loud. Loud was echoing in that room. And not only was it echoing, but I could feel the guys on both sides of their hands were doing like this. And when we got through praying, one of them I said, Do you know, do you realize the gates of hell is trembling right now? And one of the guys that delivered the other guy said, Did you feel that? And the other guy said, Yeah, that was powerful. And I mean, there was some heroin that was trying to get over it. Got all kinds of charges against them, having been in the church, and they're in there praying the Lord's Prayer, and God starts moving in the jail in a very powerful way where the guy's hands are shaking, and they're talking about, wow, that was a powerful prayer. I felt that. I felt that. What about us? I want that. Here. Amen? Here. Here. Okay, we're free to go. We're free to come and go as we want. Here, in God's house. Okay, so now, the ten of us place, and I was glad when they said I was going to the house of the Lord. Let me just do this a little, let me just do, uh, do a little bit here and get ready to close. I promise. I told you I was going to meddle. I'm only meddling for a little bit. A little meddle goes a long way. 
That's what I'm all told me. <laughs> all right. Listen carefully. I was writing this, and the Lord spoke to me so strong. Listen to me. Christians hurt their souls. Wow. I just got to stop. Think about this. You got to stop the thing. Christians hurt their souls when they go to their own places in search of God's things. So that's simmer for a while. Christians hurt their souls when they go to their own places in search of God. Wow. God's safe place. There's peace. There's power. And there's the plan. I remember one day in Williamson and there was a lady in the church. She had a bad disc in her neck. And she was kind of like this. She was a minister too. She's like this and she she is walking around like this for weeks. And she goes, He comes up to me to pray for her. She says, Pastor, I, this is killing me. The daughters aren't doing anything. I can't stand it. She's been wearing a cervical collar. And she goes, I can't stand this pain. I said, let's pray. I said, everybody, everybody put your hands up here. And we started praying for her. And as God is my witness, as we were praying for her, I felt my hands do this. And when we got through praying, I said, Amen. She hollered. And she just started doing all this. She said, look at this. Look, 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 look. She said, look what God's done. Look what God's done. I said, praise God. Everybody got happy. Next week she come back and I said, how's that next? She said, what's wrong? She said, get to huh? She said, can you lay one of those prayers on me like you did last week? And I said, no. She said, why not? I said, I ain't gonna pray against your husband's prayers. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Peace. Power. Plan. All right. Is God always healed? Yes. Is it healed in one or two? No. God has a special time. God's got his time. He healed Betty. He healed her by taking her hunting. There's three what God always heals. He heals. Look, he heals instantaneously. He heals through the process of time and uses doctors. And then he also does the ultimate healing and takes his time to be with him. But he always heals. You just got to trust him. All right. When you're here, you get to be a part of what God's doing. And you can make a positive difference. Here, you can discover God's will. All of that is found in God's hands. If you want to be a better person, I'm telling you, we got a lot of wise people in here. Not just me. Praise God. Matter of fact, if you're the wisest person in this room, you're in a you're in a mighty small room. Everybody in here, in one way or another, is a lot wiser than me. Everybody in here, in one way or another, has a lot more knowledge than yours than I do. That's why it's so important we get together so we can we can bounce off each other and help each other in the corporate faith. One foot will chase a thousand, two will put ten thousand to flight. Wow! It's powerful. So I said, how, how do I know God's will? You know, I, I thought I would throw this in there, and this, this kept coming strong. So I was riding down the road, and so I called myself and left myself a message. So I wouldn't forget it. How do I discover God's will in my life? First off, God's will is not a destination. Well, God called me to a preacher. God called me to be a singer. God called me to do this or to do that. Okay. That's the other. God's will is not a destination, but a daily journey of discovery. Think about it. A daily journey of discovery. We discover God's will as we move every day of our life. 
when we go to work, when we get hungry, when we get up in the morning, when we go back to sleep at night, all in there, we discover God's will. Little trinkets here and there. Because if you really knew God's total will for your life, you'd blow it. You know, damn. So now, here's how you discover God's will. The Ten Connection, I want to write this down. Number one, and I'm using the acrostic wheel. Number one, walk with God. You've got to be born from love. That's number one of all. Number one of all, God's will for your life is to be born again. Born again. It's His will. He sent His Son that no man should perish. Sure, he may not perish, but have the everlasting life. God. His will starts with being born from above. You've got to walk with God. Now, what else do I do if I want to learn God's will for me? Number one is to be saved. Number one priority above all. You've got to be saved. You've got to be born again. Number two, investigate his word. Start reading it. When I first started reading God's Word and really getting into it, when I have a problem, I would start searching out what the Word said about that problem. And that's how I learned to respond. As I got more mature and got older, my responses were different because I got more mature in the Word, you know, and, and, and I learned more stuff. And as I started learning more stuff, when I responded, still, walk with God, got to be born from above. Investigate this word. What is it saying to me? You know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've asked somebody in jail, asked somebody in Walmart, asked somebody in church, you know, are, are you born again? Uh, do you serve God? Do you go to church? And they'll go, well, my grandma, she served God for 50 years, faithful, 50 years. Okay, but what about you? Well, my granddaddy, he was a deacon for 75 years. Good. What about you? Well, 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 my brother, he's a minister. Okay. That's all great. What about you? What is God's word saying to you? Not just what he said to grandma, not just what he said to grandpa and my brother. What is God saying to you? The first L. Let go of the reins. Sometimes we stay so pinned up with anxiety and the ants are running wild. I mean, the ants are running so strong. God can never use me. I'll never be any good. God will never want to be somebody like me. I, God can't speak to me. Nobody wants to hear what I got to say anyway. Blah, 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 blah. And so you hold the reins so tight. Let me tell you something about people that hold the reins tight. You, you, you met them. They hold the reins so tight. Usually, if they're holding the reins so tight, it's because they're afraid if they let it go, they lose control. Or they get discovered that they're not all that in a bag of chips. They're making only like one thing, but they're not. And so they hold their rings real tight. But the most freeing thing in this world is to let go of the rings. So they go over. They go. Let God take control. God, God, show me. First, I want to be born again. Secondly, what's your word telling me? And then, how can I quit thinking about all this is about me and start thinking about other people? And think about what you'd have me to do, what, what you'd have me to say to folks. I can think about just this week. You know, uh, on multiple occasions, I had I thought I had the plan for the day, and I go to do the plan for the day, and that turn out like I think it is. So, so I go someplace else, and I get there, and I find out for the next hour or two, I'm ministering to somebody else. That they would not, I would not have been there for them if I hadn't had those plans taken away so I could be there at that precise moment. Think about the reins. Let God start calling some shots. It's not all about us. And finally, 
Here's the harmless the wild. God's will, born again, investigates the word, how's it handled? I was said in my life, let go of the range, it's not about me. And let God lead. Rest, this, this sounds kind of weird. Rest in his word, live at. Rest in his word, live at. They should pin up with frustration, anxiety, the ants are eating us alive. We see God's word, we think it's for somebody else. It's not for us. There's no way, there's no way the answer tells us that it's for somebody else. That's for the good people. That's for the people that are flawless. Let me tell you something. Real quickly, I want everybody to turn, just turn around one time and look all around. Just look around. Now, I promise you, nobody saw a perfect person. Nobody. Nobody. But some of you did see when you turned around, you saw people with thoughts. You saw people that have struggles. You saw people that need God. It's just like you. God wants us to rest by living out is one. <laughs> That's how you grow. What does God's word say about it? I'm going to let go of the range and I'm going to live like he said it. And I'm going to let God handle the consequences. But remember, that's the daily journey of discovery. What you see right here, I've got right over the daily journey of discovery. There it is. The will of God. Here's your assignment for this week. God is so good to us. It amazes me how good He is to us, especially when we haven't been so good to Him. This week's challenge. And Brandy, you tell me you're going to play something, bro. This week's challenge. Get back into the Word of God. <coughs> well, it's boring. <laughs> well, I don't know where to go. I don't know how to start. Well, I tried to read the book of Magos, but I got, I forgot, I forgot to do about 15 Magos. Well, I tried to read the, read, read the book of Leviticus. I started in Leviticus. Well, no wonder, you know, getting excited about the Word. I challenge you to get into the Word of God. And here's how you're going to do it. Start with the book of John. Start with John. Read it straight through. Then read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. 75% of John is not found, or is not, 75% of John is not found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke are synoptic gospels. They were written soon after the death of Christ. John was written at the end of the first century. He said, I don't feel in some gaps. And so read that. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and read John again. Then read the book of Acts. I promise you, the Bible will come alive. King James Version is the number one most widely accepted translation. I always use that as my anchor. But I like the New Living Translation, the Amplified Bible. You can trust them. They're good. It don't amplify the Greek and the Hebrew, and it will bring it out in a way that makes it even more fun. Let's get back into the Word of God. Don't wait for somebody else to read. I can't tell you over the years, the guys that would tell me, I'd say, guys, and I'll work with you. Guys I met places, I'd say, why don't you go to church? And they go, well, my wife goes, she takes the kids. That's good enough. Oh, really? Your wife going to church and taking the kids, that's good enough. Do you realize you're a priest to your home? Do you realize that when you stand before God, you're going to be the one to go account for that house? Not your wife. Well, I didn't think about that. Yes, you are the one. You realize your prayers are the most powerful prayers in that house because you are the priest of your home. You're the one that should be mediating between God and your family. And then as they get their people out and they start getting married, now you're the patriarch. 
So to appreciate your hunger, to make sure of your family, it's important because you have power in doing great lives. Get back into the Word. When you get back into the Word, let it challenge you. Let it enlighten you. Let it charge you. Let it recharge you. It's about time for the season to start again. I'll tell you something else. Watch The Chosen. That little, there's only like 10 episodes of season. I think season four is coming up. They take the Word of God. They never change the Word of God, but they make, they put the story around it. They, they bring it to life and they put other kind of stories with it. But the Word of God never changes. He's got a, re, he's got a, a rabbi. And he's got a Catholic priest and he's got a Baptist, all three of them. They're, they're working together with him to make sure that everything lines up with the Word of God. So there's nothing on there you can't look at there and say, well, that's not what the Word of God says. And just point of up, the point I'm trying to think about that is, uh, when he read Jack Jairus' daughter, he said, I say, I need damsel to rise. On this chosen, he reached down and said, Little lamb, wake up. And I said, he said, damps. He just said, little lamb. And so I went back into my Greek lexicon and I traced that word damps. Damn. And you know what the word damps means? Little lamb. Wow. And it has so much power. So, do things like watch the shows. There's other things you can watch too. But I know that's safe in the Bible anyway. That was a safer. Challenge your light and charge and recharge you. Whatever you do, live out God's word beyond these walls. Watch God show up and show off. When you live his word, you see. God isn't obligated to do everything we say. He's not saying, he's not there going, yes, I'm boss, tell me what to do things. No. God's not obligated to do everything you say. He's not obligated to back every one of your words, but it's one thing he is obligated to. He did it. He obligated himself to back up his work. <coughs> <coughs> And when I find myself in a bind, I go to God's Word, I find out what it says about it, and I stand on God's Word, and I hold it. Then when the ants go marching in, when they come around to me, I find them with that Word. And it it's so amazing. Because one thing I've discovered, things didn't always turn out well one of the two. Bethany still died. My mom still died. But in the middle of all of them, there was peace. Because I know that's part of life. And I know to get to God, you have to walk through that door. And I also know that I was standing on God's word and clinging to the promises of God the whole time. Had to do it now. God's got us. God's got us. God's got us. God's got us. I was back up to leave it. Right there. Mm -hmm. Everybody stay. Mm -hmm. Every hit by it, every eye closed. Mm -hmm. God wants us to have his attitude. The attitude of Christ. 
a servant at the city. More concerned about serving than to be served. More concerned about helping. More concerned about giving it all you got. And watch what God will do. Because when you get that way, you're pleasing Him. I was in the yard the other day and DC was sitting on one side and I was sitting on the other. Sierra was in the middle and the guard come in and looked over at DC, looked over at me, he looked at me and said, There's your mini me right there. I said, That's the old big mini me. And DC stood up and said, the Lord showed me this word, and I finally understood it. And Jesus said, You sing me, you sing the Father. He said, And I hope when you see me, you see my Father. I hope when people see me, they see my Father. God wants to rebuild us. We have the answer to all the crazy mess going on. We haven't. That's why Satan tries so hard to keep us from getting this in our hands and in our spirits. God's got us. 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 Somebody say God's got us. Alright, every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to ask several questions. I want you to be honest. Number one. Are you as close to God as you want to be? Never. That's a very simple question. It doesn't take a whole lot of thought. You know. I ain't got to beat you up with the Bible. I ain't got to fall behind take notes. Simple question. Are you as close to God as you would like to be or need to be? And if the answer is no, and nobody's looking around, I want you to just put that hand up. Say, pray for me, Pastor. I'm not as close as I need to be. Touch him, touch him, touch him, Lord. Touch him, touch him. Bless him, touch him. Maybe you feel close to God, but the ants have taken over. The ants have eat you up. You feel like you're worthless, that you couldn't do anything for God, that you are untalented, you got nothing. You get intimidated. I promise you, when I, when DC's up here singing, I go up here and lead after he's laying, it's intimidating to me, very intimidating. But you know why? He ain't here. So I say, God, I'm willing. Let's let it rip. God's got you. Don't be intimidated. And don't be destroyed by the hands. God's got you. And in this last day, more than anything, Get with God's people so you can learn and discover God's will for your life and your family can grow together in God. But then we get about every eye closed. If you want your family to grow closer than it's ever been to God, and you want a man, you want to be the leaders of your home that God's called you to be. And wives, you want to see your husband be that leader, and you want to be there to help him and be his healthy. And you want to see your family grow in God, and you want to see it happening before your very eyes. Nobody looking around? Nobody looking around? Every head bowed. When you put that hand up and say, I want it. 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 Bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them. Now we're going to pray together. God's got something special in store for this church. Very strong. Very strong. It's already laid the groundwork. And it's up to us. I know we're in a season of pain, in a season of hurt, a season of sickness. I don't like it. I know you don't like it. But God's got us. Even in all that, God's got us. And I thank Him. Those that are our members of our body that are sick, God bless them, touch them, heal their bodies. Those outside of our members, 
that we know that they're sick, heal their bodies, God. And Lord, heal their bodies, number one, for your glory, but number two, so that they can be a strong witness for what's getting ready to take place. Y'all bring this to me. Lord, Lord I love you. I, love you. I praise your name. Praise your name. I thank you, I thank you for, your grace, for your grace, for your mercy. For your I thank you, God, I thank you, God, that you are with us, that we are not alone. We're not alone. I thank you, God, thank you. that we are not helpless. We're not helpless. We have hope. We have a... I thank you, God, I thank you. that we still, we still to step into your church <laughs> without the law. Chases. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. That we're free. And we're free. And God, you have the power that you want to give us. That same power that was in B5 last week is the same power that is here right now. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We know our time is short. Help us take advantage of it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Heal our families. Heal us. Help us draw close to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give Lord a hand clap. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. When we do say that, I will say the Lord's Prayer. I uh, want Steve to dismiss this in prayer, but when you say the Lord's Prayer this time, here's what I want you to think about before you start saying it. This is not just more here, sister. Okay. I'm pulling in. We're gonna stand in for Sierra. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, you're awesome. You have all power, all knowledge, all wisdom. God, the doctor's still trying to figure out what's going on with Sierra, but God, you created her. You knew her from the womb. You knew her from the poor womb. And God, you knew this day was going to be here, God. And Father, you had the answer. You see, she doesn't have it. Amy doesn't have it. She doesn't have it. At the moment, the doctors don't have it. But God, you have it. And Lord, you can heal her right now and raise her up in this bill with just one touch. But Lord, if you should decide to do it through medicine, Lord, we thank you for that too. We thank you, God, for touching this young lady. And help her know, God, right now in her bed, Lord, she can feel it. Let her mama feel it. Let her daddy feel it. So the very power is taking place in the name of Jesus. And Lord, everybody in this church, Lord, Lord, those that are sick, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to touch Barbara and touch Jeannie, Lord, and touch them all. Father, that are having bodily afflictions, Lord, touch my sister right here, Lord. Those that need a touch in their body, touch Stephen's legs, Lord. Ask you, God, just to minister, Father, and wait for you, you can, in the name of Jesus. And we trust you, and we know, God, that you got this. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Lord, the Lamb of God. 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 Amen. When you say Lord's Prayer, this isn't just something that your children learn when they're little, and you learn when you were little, and it's something to say before you go to bed at night. The disciples noticed that when Jesus prayed, it was different than when the Pharisees prayed. When the Pharisees prayed, they were out there trying to get everybody to notice how they were in their long faces, and they were all real sad, and, and everybody noticed just how godly they were, and actually what they were were religious. Nothing was happening. But when Jesus prayed, something happened. And they knew that Jesus spent time alone with God, and that was the difference. So they said, Jesus, teach us. John taught his disciples how to pray. Teach us how to pray. And when Jesus taught them how to pray, he said, I want you to pray in this manner. And once he said that, we're going to say this in a minute. What he was saying is, this prayer, if you get somewhere and you don't know what else to say, you say this prayer. If you're in a bind and you have no idea how to pray for the situation you're in, you say this prayer. 
If you find yourself in trouble, you say this prayer because this is one of the most powerful prayers in the entire world. All right? It's the Lord's Prayer. All right? Now, here we're going to say it together. And just remember this. We may not feel a thing, but when you say this prayer, all the hell trembles. Okay? Let's say it together. Who brought us here? Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass Father God, we love you, Lord. We pray to you, Lord. And Lord, we just pray, and we know that you give us the word that says you put someone in front of and need you. You know, we're in our life. We're in our life. You know, we're full of the prayer. We're all in our name, pray. Amen. 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 Amen.